Alright, so, uh, this is just to, um, prove to you that I'm not lying about this game that I found. That's a dead kid. This game is trying very hard to make it seem like, um, like there's an entity in it. Like, uh, a ghost. Or an AI trying to communicate with me. It's interesting. But you know, the way you know that there's a ghost in a game trying to communicate with you is if it comes out, if it stops being distant. Hello everyone, Ethan Catic One here. Before you click off this video, give me 10 minutes to show you this is going to be a good video. Because I put a lot of time and effort into this video. It's going to be my theories on Petscop. And if you cannot handle serious stuff, like serious topics, please um, do not watch this video. I'm going to put a disclaimer right here uh, at the beginning of the video. Please, just you know, if you, if you can't handle this, you know, click off the video. And uh, let's get right into it, alright? Hello everyone, Ethan Kattig1 here, and well, this is my uh, Friday the 13th video, and it might come out late, because I had to redo it. But, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> now, obviously, this is a, you know, really cool, you know, like, fake, obviously, made by uh, Paul or someone else. And it, it's, like, really interesting, and obviously I recommend watching all ten of the episodes. It's really good. Um... But, you know, there's there's something that always confuses me. How could have Rainer given him the game if he said he found the game? Now, that's, I know that's stupid, but, you know, my theory is that Rainer is not real. Rainer is a figment of his imagination, and, well, he just, you know, plain doesn't exist. He was created in Paul's mind to feel, I guess, less alone. I don't know. I don't know Paul's life, man. But if you if you read the um about on the um if you read the about on Petscop, you'll find that it says Rainer gave this gift to us and Rainer in quotes by the way on Christmas 1997-2000. It was the single longest day of our lives. We were all certain he was dead at the time. He'd been missing since June 1997 and 2000. We're not as concerned about these things now. For now, there is nothing to do. We are waiting patiently for Paul. When the time comes, we'll turn on the light. I see. I may be stupid, but... I don't inherently know how he could have been gone the time that they thought he was dead. Even though he gave them the gift on two separate years. I, I don't know. I don't know why they, he would give him the gift twice. Uh, I may be just thinking into this, you know, too deeply, and that's, I guess, kind of stupid of me. But... It's kind of stupid, because he also says his mom had the game. And then that he found the game. And that he was going to review the tapes with someone who... Now you see, th this is where my second theory comes into place, is that... Who is the third person? He's, re he's always referring to this other person. I can't wait to review these tapes with you when you get back. And it's... It's confusing, because how or who is running the YouTube channel? He says, he even says that. Uh, but also, uh, when you come home next month, and uh, hopefully you're feeling a little more enthusiastic about that now, we can investigate this together. So, it, it makes no sense, because he also says... It's kind of fun, actually going through a four-hour video and noticing that on one half of the video the windmill is going one direction and in the other half it's going in the other direction but if he has to sift through four hours of footage and edit it why would he do that I mean why would he edit the tape if he's going to well, the tape uh, why would he edit the recording even though there'd be no point to edit the recording only him and Rainer are going to see it. But then he contradicts himself by also talking about the entire... By, they'll be uploaded Very by someone else, you know. It's, it's just confusing 
how he would need to edit them to in order to watch them, but he doesn't need to edit them. It's like you can just like skip ahead. There'd be no point in editing it. It, w it wouldn't make sense because it's like he's like, oh, these are going to pop up somewhere, but he's editing them so that they're ready to be set up. So who is the third man in this situation? Could it be Paul running the YouTube channel, even though it refers to Paul in the third person? Could it be Rainer, even though it talks about Rainer in quotes? Could it be a third unknown mystery man named Jake, Jim, uh, anything really? It's like, who is running the YouTube channel that we see upload these videos? Because there's no context. And also it says the questions that we tried to ask, which is really confusing because it makes it seem like Paul's running the YouTube channel and he says that they'll be uploaded somewhere. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense to me, you know? And I don't understand how that, like, how it all works out in the end because we have no idea, we don't know who created the game. It might have been Paul and it might have been some guy who, like, was like, hey, you're my friend, Paul, uh, you do this and I'm gonna give you lines to say and such, you know? But, and then we also have the obvious theory of the breaking the new maker chain and not turning care into care NLM. Oh, and let me tell you the sad story of, uh, of a girl named Candace Newmaker. She is basically like the main focus of this whole new maker theory, since it's like the, the, um, well, the theory with the most evidence is like basically confirmed. If we had the creators at our side right now, we would probably know it's confirmed. But what's the whole point about making it about Candace Newmaker? And let me explain the whole story of what happened, all right? Candace Newmaker, or Tiara Newmaker, is, um, well, she's a girl who was killed by her foster parents. Yeah, that's a quick leap, right? So she was adopted by, um, Jean Newmaker and Jack McDaniel. And, well, um, they were doing this thing to make it so that she would love them as if they were her own parents, right? And it was this thing called rebirthing. And, well, five people sat on her in a gigantic flannel, and, like, they wrapped her inside of it to simulate a womb. And then they sat on her, and they were, like, doing, like, incredibly mean things to her. It's like, oh, yeah, go ahead, die. Die right now. And she didn't even want to do it. She was forced to do this. And then after, like, a a long time, I think 75 minutes, she had died from, um, from, you know, not being able to breathe, and she had, like, barfed and, uh, defecated herself, and then they were like, oh, look at her, sleeping in her own vomit, it's really messed up, the story is, like, <clears throat> extremely dark, and, uh, I don't know why they did this, the parents even got off, like, basically scot-free, and they're obviously still alive right now, but it's, uh, it's incredibly horrible, and the whole game has connections to um, to Candace and uh, and Jean and Jack. And I I don't know why it does. I don't know why it has these like very um <clears throat> like very subtle connections to it. it's like oh you are new maker and it's trying to break the new maker chain and tool like tool is meant to help you you know you ask questions about it and stuff. It tells you that you're new maker and that you're under the new maker plane and. <clears throat> it's like these really huge connections to uh, that whole story. But then there's also, obviously, Mike and Marvin. Michael and Marvin, um, well, they're like, they're the things that are basically haunting the game. Michael haunts Tool for a short amount of time to get, to get some messages to the player to, like, help Marvin. And then Marvin just wants to find out where the school and the house is. And then you show him um, after... Paul attempts to get hit by a car in the game, which is, I, I find kind of funny. Uh, you lead him to this area where there's supposed to be a, a corridor, and the corridor disappears. And then, like, Marvin just kind of leaves. That's, like, basically the last, the last we see of Marvin. And I have a theory. What is written on the wall, on chalk, and, um, and I also have a theory of that picture on that little girl's nightstand. You see, I think that it's a picture of Paul. Why would he need to be censoring it if there's no point in needing to censor it at all? It's like, it's like if it's just a regular old picture, what's the point of censoring it, you know? It's him. There's, there'd be no other point censoring it unless it was a picture of his face. And obviously when the present comes out, 
Maybe it says, like, Happy Birthday, Paul, or Happy Birthday, Rainer, you know? And then obviously written in the chalkboard could be his home or something. You know, the, the, the present and the picture is like the biggest details I have about it. It's like the only things that make sense. I, I don't know what could be written on the walls and such. Hello, future Ethan here, and I'm um, pretty sure Tool showed him. Uh, what, what he showed him was like maybe a picture of him and Rainer behind the windmill, or maybe just a picture, or maybe just like words that says we're coming for you or something. But my my other theory is that future Paul is leaving hints for past Paul. Yeah, I know that sounds kind of stupid, and it, I mean, I there's lots of evidence to this because that, we that, see that. Paul literally walk right out of a room in the exact same steps that another version of Paul walked out of. And it's like, really, like, creepy at that point. And then, <clears throat> we also have the note that came with the game that he found, and it says, Oh, uh, instead of going down, I turned to the right and became a shadow monster man. And that doesn't really make any sense because, like, what would be the point of knowing that? And why also, why would that become a note with the game? Paul found that, basically on his own, he probably didn't even remember the note, okay? The note would be extremely useless at that point because he already had gotten uh, into the basement. So, why would he remember to become a Shadow Monster Man? There's tons of, like, downstairs areas in the game. So how could he remember that exact spot would be where he became a Shadow Monster Man? And I don't know, like, he's not gonna think days into playing this. Like, yeah. He left the thing on overnight, quote-unquote. He's not gonna be like, oh, hey, look, oh, I forgot about this note. Oh, man, that makes all sort of sense now. Now that I went to the right, I became a Shadow Monster Man. He didn't even say anything about becoming a Shadow Monster Man. Okay? Now, this Pets Cop thing is kind of dead, yes, but I just wanted to share my opinion on how, you know, it, it doesn't make sense that Rainer could be real and how his mom gave it to him and also how he found it himself. And this is really like my my Friday the 13th video. <clears throat> Try to get it up as uh, early as possible. And it probably won't be though. But you know, I don't really understand. Like, <clears throat> lots of people make these games to raise the awareness and stuff. And it's like, hey, look, there's a whole deeper meaning to this game. But what's the point of having the deeper meaning about Candace Newmaker, something that happened 17 years ago? I know that's kind of stupid and... <clears throat> it's like that one guy who made that extremely messed up game that gave you a super scary virus and stuff. I, I don't know why people make these types of games. Like, I kind of want to know the real reason to why Petscop was made about, you know, Candace Newmaker. And also, what's with the whole Michael Hammond and the whole Marvin thing? It's like, why is the, is the, are those other people? And I'm not going to look it up right now. Uh, someone will, maybe. But if we could just get some answers on this, you know, that'd be, yeah, that'd be real fun. And there might be a whole deeper meaning to the, there might be an even deeper meaning to the game, alright? Like, we, we already know about Candace Newmaker, but maybe it goes even further, okay? We gotta go deeper, Leo. Also, Paul is kind of stupid because he knew what would happen if he had put care in the freaking box, and he did it anyway. He could have turned care MLM into care A. You know, it's like, why, Paul? You're you're making me mad and you're not even real. And I don't know who's running the YouTube channel. Like, like who is this mysterious third person? I can't wait to review these tapes with you. These are the questions that we asked. It's so confusing what is going on with this. Like, we already know about Paul and Rainer. And about May Rainer maybe not being real. But, what's... Wh Ha, like, could he have given Jake the game? Could Rainer have given Jake the game in the single longest Christmas of their lives? Like, I do not know what is going on with Petscop. And I, I tried to make some cool theories on it. I mean, I think these theories, like, may work out. Like, why else would Paul turn into a shadow monster man? And why else would Paul leave in the exact same steps as the other Paul did, you know? It just, there's, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no sense to it. Like, what is the entire point, you know? But this has been Ethan Kataguan on Friday the 13th. And I've been talking about 
Let's go. Yeah, I guess. Oh, this will this will be edited to make me look smarter. Goodbye.